Let's have a very nice hand for Christine Brown. Thanks, Jay. Now, we have done this because we want all of you to have equal opportunity to speak up and tell legislators what kind of things are important to you in the budget. Um, the issues that the Self-Advocate Advisory Council came up with that were important um, was this issue of the Medicaid asset limit. Medicaid asset limit has been the one I've been focused on and it's been almost two years. It's inside this next two-year budget, but it has been the same since 1974, before some of us in this room were even born. And it's like, we can't stand that people could be over 1500 someday just due to the cost of living adjustment. And for some people from the Department of Medicaid and Child and Family Services, They'd say, well, you're over 1,500, so you're ineligible for Medicaid skedaddle. And it's like, you can't do that to the disability community because we're on waivers, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> so the plan is to get that increased, and we go from a 209B state to a 1634 state. And what that does, it takes the waste bin down, but they're t making this Miller Trust Fund, so anyone that's over $2,000, like if it was $2,100, they make that $100 go automatically into the Miller Trust, and there you go, you're at $2,000. Um, so that's a kind of thing that has been proposed by the Department of Medicaid. And then this uh, other thing, provider rate increase. This has been big. It's being proposed for a 6% increase. That's a lot more than we've ever seen in years. And where this will happen, the Homemaker personal care rates and the are uh, changing the services of adult family living and adult foster care to be called shared living. And that's the plan in changes of the next two year budget. And with the interest providers must increase wages to attract and retain dedicated staff. The budget gives them resources to do so. So that is about the um, resource for the provider rates. And they're also adding nursing services to the IO waiver, that would be 7116 proposed, and the plan for these waiver rate increases will be done and in effect 1116, and then Everyone who is on the Transitions Developmental Disabilities Waiver will be transferred to the I.O. Waiver. And we also spoke up, DD Council did a study where the waiver waiting list in Ohio for people DD was at 42,200 about and 10% uh, of that was 2,200. But thankfully, the 
In this next two-year budget, they're supporting more, 3,000 slots. And that will be 1,000 soap flavors, 2,000 IOs, and I do believe that is state funded. So, um, after that, I'd like to ask Dana Charlton to come up here. She is going to explain about this um, new thing they're doing in. Put in self direction in all waivers. So I'll give it to Dana. Thank you, Chris. So there was a, a lot of concern when the uh, biennial budget bill was initially introduced because it looked like there was a proposal to eliminate independent providers from being able to provide waiver services. And lots and lots of people in Ohio depend on individuals um, for their waiver services. Is anybody on the waiver here that uses an independent provider? I see three, four, five people. Very good. Um, what we discovered through some, some pretty quick communication from the governor's office was that this was not the intent at all. Uh, that the intent was simply to create a new way for people who wanted to use individual providers to continue to do so. And a way that was um, much better. So the idea was to revise every single waiver in Ohio and add some self-directed services to that waiver and to provide employer authority with support from a fiscal intermediary. So if someone wanted to continue to use an independent provider, they could do so by selecting the self-directed services and then having that independent provider develop have a relationship with a fiscal intermediary. And that fiscal intermediary could be just a fiscal agent and accept claims for payment and process those and get the money back. Or they could be a co-employer with the person who has the disability. Or um, they could be the employer of record. So um, it's my understanding that the plan is to, um, well, first of all, this, that, this idea that was proposed in the budget bill just this week has been taken out so that it can be dealt with separately. So that's a good thing in that it, um, it sort of doesn't um, muddy the waters about all the stuff that is in the budget bill that we want to get through. So it's my understanding the plan is to put this in a separate bill and to have a separate stakeholder group of folks um, work with the state of Ohio to get self-direction in all the waivers, um, which we think would be great because it would give more choice to everyone. I am going to give this back to Christine, but before I do, if you do not have one of these little forms, we'll come around and make sure that you do. Um, one of the things we would like to use them for today is to get your questions. So everyone in the room may have a question, but everyone in the room is not going to have time to ask it and get an answer. So if you have a question about anything that Christine has said, or I have said, or that any of the legislators may say, or anyone else for that matter, write it down. And if you get to ask it, great. If not, we will take all the questions and get answers, and then we're going to publish a question and answer uh, response. If you put an email on the form, we will email you that response directly. Otherwise, you'll have to come to our website to find it. Thank you. So, great. Okay, well, I think we're about ready now to see if anybody has suggestions or thoughts, but before 
we do that, I want to introduce another one of our state representatives who is here. Uh, Representative Herschel Craig is here. He is a former member of the Columbus City Council and relatively new state representative. We thank you for coming, Representative. And I also want to I want to tell you, we also have someone here who has been a very, very great supporter of ours, who is a reporter for the Columbus Dispatch, so you better watch what you say. Her name is Rita Price, and we appreciate Rita coming and joining us today as well. So, at this point, at this time, uh, if you have any suggestions for legislators or any comments that you would want to make regarding some of the things that Christine mentioned, uh, anything that you would like to say, this is the opportunity for you to do that. So, you just have to raise your hand, and then you will stand up, and then we'll... Uh, We'll go from there, okay? And um, first, I would like to have Marcy Strotter come up forward to take the mic. We're going to let people take turns, but I'd like her to come up first. Come on up, Marcy. Okay, hello, my name is Brian Grubb, and I am a deafblind individual. I have three issues that I would like to address, uh, regarding one regarding Medicaid and the, and the program for the deafblind Ohioans. Um, our other issue is the uh, seniors 65 and up can get the support that they need, but the age between 22 and 60 is a program that is needed for the deafblind community. Um, individuals who need support in independent living and trainings throughout their life to help them become independent is not, is not available. And there's a lot of individuals who do not have that ability to grow up with the training they need to live the life independently. Um, there are a number of deafblind individuals that have increased in Ohio. And a lot of these, those individuals still need the continued support to, to, to live the life that they need. So I appreciate your time and paying attention to what I have addressed with these issues. Yes, I have a question about, I have Medicaid in Mid-Ohio, and I have had my insurance, they canceled my insurance because when they pay off and I'm eligible to have insurance. And I'm just now getting my insurance back. Why would they take it away from me if they know I have disabilities? <laughs> I'm Robert Schmidt from Appleton County. Um, I wanted to know what does a person being served need to do in order to uh, be on a board or panel to support the independent providers. My name is Dark Bates and I'm from Delaware County. And first of all, I wanted to say thank you to the representatives for taking the independent provider thing out of the budget. That was a definite thank you. Because in Delaware County, I'm going to tell you what, you guys opened a whole can of worms, and there was a lot of people not happy. And we spoke up, and we got our voices hurt. So we wanted to say thank you for that, for taking that out of the budget. Second, um, I'm with Christine Brown. I agree that the Medicaid asset limit needs to be raised. Because I have a car, and I'm trying to get on Medicaid right now. I have no insurance. I'm trying to get insurance, but I want to get on Medicaid so I can get on the self waiver, so I can do my own living, and I can tell my group what I want, and 
I think the asset limit needs to be raised because if I have a car, if something happens to my car, I'm not going to have money to fix it. If something I need money for, I'm not going to have it. So I just agree that it needs to be fixed and it needs to be raised. Hi, I'm Samantha Perry. I also agree with Christine Brown, but also with the asset limit because I'm about to lose my Medicaid. Um, I also want staff rates to go up because I don't think the staff get paid enough to take care of us. Um, I have the right to And um, it's about the labor. I don't think it's necessarily true. And I don't think it will work. share any questions, any feedback you have for us. You all are being too quiet. I know you're not a quiet bunch. And so I encourage you to please speak up and take advantage of us all being here. who are not qualified for Medicaid. And my question is, are deafblind uh, individuals disabled? That's the question that's asked. But yes, they are. They, they're questioning why they qualify. And um, I maybe I, I'm asking you please to fix that because that is an issue. Hi, I'm Amy Fowler from the Disability Skills Center. I also wanted to bring something up. There was a girl that had lupus to where some people, I guess she borrowed her mom's handicap permit to, I think it was to go to the grocery store, I can't remember where it was, but people were, 
putting put a note on her person saying, how dare you use that handicap permit when you're not handicapped. But she's in the her early stages of lupus. Is that wrong for people? I think that's kind of wrong for people to say that to a girl who is suffering with lupus. But well, my question is, if people have a handicap permit for Lou Gehrig's disease or any other disability that they have, is it wrong for someone that is not handicapped to say, how dare you park with, a, with your mother's handicap permit or your father's handicap permit? I kind of just had a comment or a suggestion, but talking about self-direction, um, it sounds self-explanatory, but I think if they do add it to all the waivers, um, I think that's something that they need to explain what exactly self-direction is. Um, explain that to the independent providers and then also to the, the consumers as well. Um, just, you know, it sounds self-explanatory, but you need to just de put in detail what that all means. People get the handicap stickers from the doctors. Well, there's, I went to the handicap, my doctor, and I asked for a sticker. Well, uh, there's people that judges you, and I really don't like that. And there's certain people that act like they're handicapped, but they're not. And they should say, my opinion, they should say the handicap spots for the handicapped people. And it's just disrespectful to me how they're treating other handicapped people. But her question is, she wants to know why some of the medications that she is prescribed are not covered by Medicaid. Hello, um, how did everybody doing today? Uh, my name is Joshua O'Connor. I'm with Respite Connections. And um, I just wanted to uh, ask him out of curiosity that, um, like for, for people who have disabilities who want to go to college or a school of any sort, uh, I was hoping maybe to make it more you know, easier for people with disabilities to uh, help fund maybe like tutoring and preparation for schooling. And for people who, who are, you know, driven to want to work a job in the community with job coaching help, um, I was hoping you guys might be able to push the funding for um, more business wise for better options and, and opportunities for jobs. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. My name is Gabe, and I want to tell you about Medicaid. Medicaid's not paying for my meds. It's been working for the last three years. I had to pay like six bucks for my medication, and they take it out of my work check. So I just need you guys to help me for help me to figure out what's the matter with my dad. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to put in North Ohio. Let me just say one thing. We you hit me didn't go and meet me out. I mean he out walking around. I see a bunch of cars parked in the handicap zone. When you go under tags on. And I would tag on her, but I had to keep tag on her cars. People like that shouldn't be ashamed of themselves. They should be punished. It should be a step law. I want to see it while we get it. When my girlfriend here seen a lot of going on, from the city and the county to the city, I guarantee you. Well, look at it, me and my, my girlfriend look at it. That's totally wrong. 
that when I stand, that when I stand, we go believe it. Whoever did the type of thing, part in the handicapped drums, that had a car turned away, or the silver, a heavy, heavy, heavy county, or a heavy fly. Now, but good, uh, in case you don't believe that, I got two words for him. He break on the ball. I got a set of tiger back home, named Toby, and he will have a huge debtor in that. I like to have one, there's one thing I tell you to always do, change the ball, work it for a, took out a singing or uh, took out a, a singing was still a high in front of the teacher. That's one thing I like to do. I like to help the still have. I like to help the still have control. And I guarantee you, I will stand behind Casey or uh, his uh, uh, staff. But if he does that go, give him Casey, go be a meal. My little big boy, Toby, let him know. Toby has got a uh, pet pee with a governor. We don't believe we don't believe you. He bring her to me. My name is Leah Gayhart, and I'm from Fairfield uh, County Board of Me. And I wanted to say two things. One is I recently got engaged to my fiance, and I feel like sometimes a lot of people don't accept me because um, he is older than me. He's going to turn 43, and I feel that, you know, because of age difference, because he is a different race than me, and because he is, um, um, uh, he's, his weight is different, so I don't think that's fair that a lot of people judge because you're a different race or nationality or anything. And the other thing I had to say was, um, I feel that everybody should be treated equally and fair, and nobody should be treated without respect. So that's all I had to say. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. My name is Diana Myros, and I am president of the Ohio Self Dissolution Association. I am in my second song. I just have, um, I just want to thank you all for coming, and please remember that transportation. This will always be an issue, and we will continue to need to make this happen for all of us. Affordable and accessible transit is essential. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I um, don't know if any of the legislators would want to offer a comment. I uh, certainly appreciate everybody coming, and if anybody would like to offer a comment, this would be an opportunity to do that. Good morning. It's still morning. <laughs> I just uh, I had heard several comments about the handicap placard. And I want to let you know that um, my office is currently exploring a piece of legislation as it relates to the several issues that many of you brought up today as it relates to the handicap placard. Uh, one of the suggested items uh, for legislation was putting uh, possibly a, a, a photo on the handicap placard who owns that placard uh, to prevent misuse. There's, there's activity of the placards being sold on the black market, being exchanged for the OSU football games. Um, that's a concern that I had heard. So uh, I do want to just uh, let everybody know that that is something our office is exploring as a piece of legislation as it relates to handicap placards and just some of the concerns that are surrounding the use of that. I just want to thank you all for your wonderful questions. You guys are awesome. Uh, you continue to engage us, uh, raise issues, and, and share concerns, your personal experiences, uh, your perseverance, uh, your independence. Uh, we appreciate it. So I, I know there, not everyone was able to ask a question. Please fill out the cards that were provided. 
the staff, uh, and Christine in particular, will make sure we have those and we'll continue to work on those issues. The ideas we work on come from you all uh, in terms of talking about asset limits and some of the independent stuff. Those were all ideas that came from this meeting two years ago. It was you know, doing the groundwork, engaging us, and educating us uh, on what you would like to see changed. And we're here to be your voice. So I encourage you to continue that engagement and appreciate you asking so many wonderful questions today. Thank you. Good morning. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank uh, Jay uh, for all of his work and his leadership uh, in, this, uh, in this area. And certainly, Christina, I enjoyed you so much coming to my office. And uh, your thoughtfulness and uh, your direction. You were very clear about it. Uh, uh, all of the legislators uh, having a listening ear, uh, being mindful, being very careful about uh, the things that were deeply concerning uh, to the community. Uh, in 1972, 1973, I had the privilege of working uh, with the uh, differently abled uh, on West Broad Street. Uh, and I was so privileged to do that work. I want to certainly thank my wife, who cares deeply uh, about the work that she's doing here on the board. And I thank all of you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for your questions. We listen intently to your questions. God bless you. Thank you. She criticized that I talk too much. Uh, I, prom <laughs> I, I am. You'd be surprised. She'll be stuck. But I just want to echo the thoughts uh, of, of my good friends. Is you know we really appreciate you, and I really make that point. You know your voices were heard on the independent provider. I mean, anybody that says that they can't be heard, you were heard. And so, I just want to thank you. I really enjoy coming on that. If I didn't come, she'd be in my office on Monday saying, where were you? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Christine is great. So, just a great pleasure to be here. Mike Curtin, uh, thank you for the invitation to be here. Some things in government politics over the decades and centuries uh, change and some things never change. Uh, one of the things that never changes uh, in our democracy is that groups that are organized always do better than groups that are not organized. And budgeting is always the allocation of scarce resources. And there's never enough resources to go around to meet all the good uh, objectives, all the good goals that are out there, whether they're libraries, whether they're K-12 education, higher education, uh, meeting the needs of this community that you represent, um, whatever it is. And so budgeting is hard, and every budget, uh, every two years at the state level, every year at the city level, every year at the county level, is all about the allocation of scarce resources. And things get done in budgets that, if we don't hear from people, you know, there's, there's bad outcomes. And so, because you have people like uh, Superintendent uh, Morrison and Christine Brown and Bridget Gargan at the State Association of Boards, uh, not much gets past your, your, your folks and you need to keep it that way. And when you can fill a room the size of this uh, every year or two, however frequently uh, you're able to organize these things, you're going to do much, much better for yourself. So, uh, give yourselves a round of applause for, for this. Tremendously educational uh, for us, and it's obvious that uh, we're hearing your concerns and know what your priorities are. So thank you. Um, David Leland from uh, North Columbus. Um, I just want to say basically the same thing that has already been said by my colleagues, that uh, we depend on input from all of you to uh, help us do our jobs better in the, in the legislature. And I appreciate the fact that you put these signs on the wall just in case we forgot anything that you might have said uh, during the presentation. So there's no way we can walk in or walk out of this room without knowing the priorities uh, that you've set forward with, with today. My dad, when, when I, my dad was very much involved with Superintendent Morrison and other people on, on these issues for many, many years. And, and my father used to always tell me that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And, that just reinforces what the Representative Curtin just said, is that we have lots of people coming at us 
um, saying we need to do this, we need to do that, and we need to take care of this priority. It's important for each and every one of you uh, to let us know what's an important priority for you. I know it took a lot of time and effort on everybody in this room to come to Columbus to prepare this program. It's worth it. You made an important point, and I just want to say thank you for all of your effort and for helping us do a better job. Thank you very much. I'm Chad Smith, uh, representing the U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown, uh, who regrets that he could not be here in person uh, to meet with you today. Uh, I want to thank you all for your thoughtful questions uh, and concerns. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. I think they've really done a great job of expressing how important it is for us to hear from you. So keep doing what you're doing. We look forward to hearing from you in the future. Uh, thank you for having us today. Well, gosh, this has been wonderful. Great questions, great, great suggestions, and again, what wonderful Central Ohio legislators we have right here in, in Franklin and surrounding counties. So thank you to all of our uh, legislators. So what we have planned is to uh, take a little, it's what we call a 15 minute sort of networking and break, an opportunity to talk to other people. Uh, shake the hand of your legislator if you would like and, and, and offer another suggestion on their way out. But uh, thank you very much. We will meet again. At